Should you build or buy a NAS? It's an interesting question that back in the day, the answer was pretty obviously, build your own NAS. And in fact, I built two of them quite some time ago. Since then, however, I've been buying my NASs, and in this episode, I'll show you why. So I built these about six or seven years ago, back before the appliance size NASs were really common and frankly, as good as they are. So I also needed a 10 slot unit and back at the time, 10 slots, the ability to put that much storage on one of these little appliance things really wasn't there because hard drives were, I mean, two terabytes was about as big as you could get. So these were each populated. One of these was populated with uh, 10 one terabyte drives and one of these was populated with 10 two terabyte drives because we built one slightly after the other and we used one as a main and one as a backup for a local backup. But if you compare that, for example, to the early Drobo, this was the first Drobo we got, which held four drives. This thing is vastly smaller, obviously, than these are, and much lighter, and takes a lot less power, and makes a lot less noise. Now, if you move forward to today, where I just did a review of the fabulous Synology 1817 Plus, which holds eight drives, but this thing can hold eight 10 terabyte drives, you've got a much smaller machine, a much lighter machine, self-contained with all the operating system stuff that you would possibly want all built into one of these machines. It's vastly easier to do. As compared to these things, which I'll show you in a minute, I'm gonna show you what's inside them. I'll show you how complex they are to build and how much of a pain they were, and some of the operating system issues. So you're, when you're looking at NASs today, this, draw, this machine down here is about 950, 960 bucks. These back in the day cost me about 750 to 850 to build. So if you were to look at hardware today, these bays are more expensive today than they were then. Uh, obviously memory is cheaper per gigabyte and so forth. But the fact is, is you're looking at maybe a hundred bucks difference between building and buying. And sometimes that hundred buck difference is in the advantage of building and sometimes it's in buying. But you're really not gonna see a, a cash difference in terms of building and buying. What you're looking at is power they use, space they take, how much time they take to build, and things like that. Now, if you've never built a NAS, it's a worthwhile exercise if you wanna be somebody who really understands how these go together, the complexities of them, how to build an operating system for them, what operating systems to choose, and all that sort of thing. But if you've already done that and you just have a job to do, there is no question that something as simple as the Drobo or as powerful as the Synology is the way to go in, in your own NAS. I, I, at this point, I cannot see having to do building my own NASs ever again, which is why, frankly, these computers are sitting here because these are computers that we dug up as part of the move. And as you can see, I haven't fully unpacked yet. Um, I've just dug them out and I'm getting ready to take them out of service because I'm no longer using them and I no longer have any expectation of using them compared to these nice little appliance machines. Let's take a look inside this thing uh, so you can see what goes on inside these NASs. And as you can tell, cable management is far from my forte. Let's go handheld because I want to show you a couple things. The first thing I want to show you are these two bays. If you can see this one, and then there's one kind of hidden down there. Those are what are holding the banks of hard drives. And what happens is they come through to, to these special SATA boards I've got. And you can also maybe tell, let's see if I can bring this down a little bit. You can maybe tell that this motherboard has a whole lot of SATA connections on its own. One of my selection criteria for this motherboard was a motherboard with a pile of SATA connections to begin with. And so in order to build this thing, I needed a lot of SATA connections because I have 11 drives in here, 10 that are data drives and one that is the boot drive. And so that's what went into these things. And so we had to kind of custom build these things and find the bays and put them together and fit them in and so forth. The challenge for something like this isn't as much the 
building an, an assembly, although not all the pieces fit, it's, it's sourcing all the parts, getting all the pieces that you need, finding the stuff that'll go together, and then assembling it. It's a lot of fun, but once you've done it, there's really no need to do it again. And that's again why you might wanna go with an appliance machine. Okay, so it is the next day, and as you can see, the towers are gone. They have been donated. And uh, I'm going to go back to setting up my Drobos and Synologies and other NASs and bring this place back up and running. I do not regret getting rid of those NASs. They were big. They were cumbersome. They served an amazing purpose for the time. But I got to tell you at this point, buy instead of build. And that would be my recommendation for just about everyone unless you have an incredibly special purpose need. If you need maybe, maybe, maybe to save a hundred bucks or so, or most important, if you want the experience of building your own so you know what goes into one of those machines. That's it. My name is David Gewurz for ZDNet's DIYIT. Go forth and build something cool.